All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, so great to have you all with us. Um, my name is Robin Hansberger. I am the Director of Sales um, with Golf Forever, along with my business partner, Brandon McLeod, um, also Director of Sales and Class A uh, coaching professional uh, with the PGA of Canada. I'm sorry, I may have butchered that, Brandon, but I will get you to introduce yourself shortly. We have such a great um, lineup for you guys today. Uh, wanted again to thank the PGA of Canada for our national partnership um, and also uh, being able to speak with all of you today. So the topic of today's presentation is retraining motor patterns in the golf swing using the Golf Forever Swing Trainer. So just out of curiosity, um, how many people on the call right now have a Golf Forever Swing Trainer? If you can just dump that information to the chat saying, I do, that would be great. It'll really help us understand who actually has a swing trainer and who doesn't, and will really help us tailor the presentation really to, to gear it towards your guys' needs. So if you wanna type that in the chat, um, or in the Q&A portion, um, you guys can let us know there. All right, perfect. So we have a good mix of people who do and who don't, and that's totally okay. Uh, we're here to uh, focus on education today. Um, so we're just gonna dive right into it. This is perfect. Thanks for the insight. All righty. So today we're just gonna go over some quick introductions. We're gonna dive into what Golf Forever is all about. Um, and then honestly introducing the star of our show, Brandon McLeod, who is going to take you through the five, five key motor patterns in the golf swing. Now, don't get me wrong, these are not the only motor patterns in the golf swing, um, but for the sake of time, um, we're gonna focus on the top five that we are seeing not only in our in-house academy, um, but what we are seeing with um, our existing Golf Forever clients and students. Um, we're then gonna go over some PUD and wholesale programs for uh, individual golf professionals, um, lessons, clinics, camps, academies, and, and we're really going to make sure you guys have the opportunity to ask questions at any point throughout the session today. We really want this to be super interactive, um, and we really want to make sure you get your questions answered. Um, so without further ado, we will dive right in. So some really exciting industry buzz. Um, first and foremost, we are coming to you live from Markham, Ontario. Um, Brandon is the director of instruction at the AIM Golf Academy with its home in Hansberger Physio Plus. We have a golf performance lab with a custom GC Hawk that you see in the background, V1 pressure mat, K vest, that kind of thing. So we have a lot of experience in the golf space. Um, and what you're gonna hear today is truly about how we have been able to integrate the Golf Forever into Golf Forever uh, swing training system into our programs and be able to help golf professionals really understand the body and impact lessons, camp, clinics, and academies, but also their personal performance. So here you're going to see some industry buzz. Um, we've got our national partnership um, with the PGA of Canada, which is super exciting. Score Golf did a feature of us um, and the partnership with the PGA of Canada. So I will share some of these links with you guys afterwards. Um, we also have a feature from Golf Week. We have Golf Digest, we have Golf, and we there's a few other great publications that will give you a lot more insight into who we are and what we do um, if you're interested afterwards. The big thing here is, have you ever met a golfer whose swing could be better if their body had the mobility and flexibility to get in the right positions? That is the, the day old question, I think, for not only golf professionals alike for their own game, um, but for all of your students, clients, um, and the people you work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Would you agree with that statement, Brandon? 100%. Yeah. Can you hear me? Absolutely. We can hear you loud and clear. So just quickly, um, what is Golf Forever? Golf Forever is a golf fitness and wellness system that uses, sorry guys, my slides seem to be hopping around here like crazy, um, that uses an intuitive app and key training equipment that you see on the right side of the screen uh, in Brandon's hitting bay over there um, 
to virtually deliver all golfers the same world-class workout plans, recovery programs, and performance workouts to complement your coaching. Um, so for golf professionals specifically, we're looking today not only at your individual training, we're looking at player development and improvement, we're looking at using Golf Forever as a diagnostic tool, but also how to integrate this into your lessons, clinics, camps, academies, but most importantly, some of that follow-up training that you want your students to do after some of your lessons. So that's a little bit about the swing trainer in a nutshell. We have a unique system that combines a first of its kind strength and mobility training tool with a personalized workout and recovery plan, again, using the intuitive app from world-class specialists that know golf. This system was designed by a chiropractor who focused on back pain, and through his experience, um, he was able to identify the most compliant participants in his back program were golfers. So that's really where we pivoted from back forever and fit forever into golf forever. Um, so that's a little bit about our backstory because of the, for the sake of time today, I'm not going to dive into the full brand story, but if you're interested, we can always schedule a call to follow up on some of that stuff afterwards. So the swing been there, Robin. That's kind of how I, when I'm talking to different clients, when I'm teaching older clients, you know, struggling with mobility, I kind of lean into that kind of back health. The, the company was founded on that. Younger players, I kind of focus on more performance, speed, that kind of thing. Thanks. That's perfect. So what you'll see here, and we're going to go through this just very quickly, every single tw swing trainer system comes with a asymmetrical training bar. Um, we have a uh, power grade soft sweat resistant but rubber grips, two of those, um, two premium resistance bands, uh, a light and a medium. We have two carabiners. We have a universal door anchor, which makes this a lot easier for your students to use on the road, uh, work out from home, um, even potentially put in their car door jam in the parking lot, depending on where they are. Um, we also have um, a D3 swing weight and a heavy weighted ball for overload speed training. Um, and then we have two soft rubber handles as well. So there's a lot that comes in the Golf Forever swing training system. Um, and you're gonna see Brandon use key elements of that uh, throughout the session today. The app quickly, um, we do always start with a self-assessment, which allows our platform to design a golf fitness program for your needs. Um, so we're looking at three different movements. Uh, we look at what equipment you have available to you, um, and then we create a, a 30 to 45 minute customized warm up and workout routine that progresses as you do in the game of golf. Um, there's hundreds of different routines anytime in your library. We have pre round warm ups, stretching and pain relief, strength and rotational power, and on course performance. We'll dive into that a little bit later, um, but that's the essence of the app. Um, and I I personally use this as a part of my core training, not only for golf, but for everyday health and wellness. Um, and, and I've seen a lot of value personally, and Brandon will share some personal anecdotes for you a little bit later. So today, the, the, the main focus for us is to take you through the best motor pattern retaining tool on the market. And we truly believe that Golf Forever is that number one motor pattern retraining tool available to us in the game of golf. It's looking at balance, it's looking at speed, it's looking at rotation, and it's also looking at distance. And that's really what we're gonna dive into today. So the five key motor patterns or sort of swing related patterns that we're gonna focus on today are poor posture at address, reverse spine angle, back swing width and depth, proper body sequencing in the swing, and improved impact and follow through positions. So without further ado, I am going to introduce you to the star of our show. Brandon's gonna give you a quick insight onto who he is, how he uses the swing trainer and dive into these five key um, motor patterns. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask at any time in the chat or unmute yourself. Quickly, Brandon, I'm just going to pause sharing my screen and I am going to pin you to the front so everybody can see you here. All right. You just let me know when I'm ready, Robert. Go ahead. Awesome. Hi, everyone. Thanks for taking the time out of your busy schedules in the busiest time of the season to spend some time with us today. So appreciate uh, that first and foremost. 
Again, my name is Brandon McLeod, Director of Instruction at the AIM Golf Academy, Director of Sales with Robin uh, for Canada for Golf Forever, um, and, and really excited to kind of share with you guys what we found this winter in Golf Forever and what's kind of led us to here. Um, one of the first moves we made was establish this partnership with the PGA Canada. The reason why is I wanted to share with my colleagues kind of what we're going to share with you today of what I found so amazing about this product, not only for me in my golf swing and my health and my stability and my flexibility and strength and power, all those things Robin touched on, but my ability to speed up the re-education process of the motor pattern learning. That's really difficult for players, especially kind of higher handicap players who are trying to um, hit the ball better with more speed distance and, and control of it. So, um, Again, ask questions along the way. Robin's going to monitor the chat. Uh, please, like, if, if you've got questions on any of these things as we touched on them, I'm going to go through two or three because we're going to keep this brief. But if you guys have, want to get in depth and kind of spend half an hour, 45 minutes with me on your own, um, please reach out after the recording. Happy to set up a Zoom call to walk through this a little bit more in depth because we're going to kind of speed through this a little bit to touch on all these areas. Um, so yeah, so let's start with posture and, uh, and, and core for the, for the golf swing. And I think this, this is the biggest game changer for me in my just back health in general. Uh, I've been working with Robin and her family's physio team for a long time. I, I'm in, in the clinic here now. Um, and I suffered from like kind of chronic back pain. So herniated discs and I was constantly, they were getting me back on the golf course re-injure getting me back on the golf course. I would follow their programs very diligently to get me back to health. But then when I would kind of start to work out, what, what became apparent to me using this is that when I thought I was doing the correct form and doing the things correctly, uh, I just continued to build on incorrect patterns, which led me to this kind of chronic back injuries that I had. And since introducing this into my workouts, along with the programs given from the Hansberger team, Never felt better. I'm 41 this year. Never hit the ball better. Um, so really excited to show everyone what we've got. Um, everybody on the on the screen, I'm not sure how many of you are, are actually teach, teaching professionals, but biggest problem we see hit right off the shoot is, is just poor posture. We've seen them all, right? We've got this one, right? We've got this one. And we've got, you know, the arch with the round on top. So there's kind of all different kinds, but all of those poor postures lead to the posterior chain of muscles not being engaged uh, and just a really difficult time of, of maintaining posture in the golf swing. So the three point address, first off, this is what changed my back health. Um, and, and what's changed my hip hinge. And if we can change a player's hip hinge, when we, when we can give them control of what I'm about to show you, it's really gonna give these players a lot more control through their transition. So it's the simple three-point address, okay? I'm gonna switch my hand positions throughout so you can see, but we're trying to make sure that the bottom, middle of the spine and the thoracic between the shoulder blades and the head are touching. So the biggest problem I see out of the shoot is kind of this one here. Everyone's told to stick their bum out and, and we get a huge anterior tilt in the lower half. That's going to lead to the core being turned off, the glutes being turned off. And both of those muscles are required for rotation, which is what we're trying to do here. So like I'd say 95% of our players we screen with this for posture can't even get into this position. They struggle to, to do this or they've been in an anterior tilted position for so long, they've rounded forward that when they try to, they've got no movement, they get into this, in this position here. So all these positions are tough to create speed and power. So we work with them to first understand, okay, how do we get the bar flat? And then can we hinge and maintain the flatness of the bar the entire time? And what players really start to understand and feel with this is, how to engage glutes, proper hip hinge, right? Not using their shoulders when they get into this lower position here, not using their, their shoulders to lift up and create this problem. So if we, every time 
we bend over to tie our shoes and we're doing it incorrectly. We just continue to create this poor motor pattern, which leads to chronic low back pain. And if we get into a posture where we're there and we're trying to maintain posture in a downswing, but we don't know how to hip pinch properly, it really leads to a lot of early extension. And obviously that's gonna to lead to some path issues and angle of attack issues. So we get our players to start on this bar here, get really good at that hip hinge, right? Really feeling that their glutes are fully on, like feeling like that bird drinking out of water. Do three or four of those, come over to the golf ball and a lot of our academy players now for the first couple of weeks, get into understanding how to tilt it on top. And then from there, we, we have them hit a shot. So it's just about retraining. So they'll do three of those, come back over here, hit a wall. As they get better and better and better, we switch the tensions, continue to work on strengthening the glutes there. One of the things that we love um, about fitness in general um, and, and, and our experience in the fitness and medical space is that circuit training is very common um, in all other realms of sport and exercise. Um, for some reason, it's not as common when we look at the game of golf, um, but really what we love about the Golf Forever swing training system is that we can actually use this not only in practice indoors, um, as, but also on the range. Um, and that's what really influenced this webinar today is using the Golf Forever swing training system um, as a part of a circuit specific for golf. Um, but as Brandon mentioned, the progression of really retraining that body's motor pattern. And every time we see a swing fault or something new or an error, we know we need to retrain the body's motor patterns. And that's when Brandon says, hey, no, let's reset. Let's go back and let's do this hip hinge again using the swing trainer. Um, and then let's get back into hitting some sh shots. So it's really revolutionized the way he's, he's started using this in his Academy. Totally. And, and, and what I say to my, my players that come through the Academy and, and I was on a world long drive, um, range in a competition for a couple of days. And that was pretty cool seeing the top 30 speed Berkshire, Morgan, Borgmeyer, uh, Sam Judah, like the list goes on and on. What was interesting and in seeing all those guys at top end speeds and just how poor their posture is. So Rob and I were saying, like, imagine what these guys could be. It was it was very interesting to see it. But um, core stability and posture is important. And if we're gonna swing a golf club, but the posterior chain of muscles is what we need to have turned on to swing and, and manage rotation. I kind of say to my players, it's like we get in to hit the ball and then we unplug all the power to hit it. It's like you know, we don't need to have an eight pack. We just need to turn them on for like three seconds. That's awesome. Is there um, any questions, any questions on there before we move on? I can't see the chat, Rob. So, you'll have to let so me far, know. so far, we're so, I think there's just a That's lot of people really so, interested in all this info. So let's, yeah, we can move on to the next so one here. On to the next one. Um, and one thing I kind of build off of, uh, sort of what's the next topic, Rob? We are looking at reverse spine angle next. Yeah, okay, cool. So this will lead right into that, you know, um, and I'll show kind of two things because what we see a lot in our, in our screens on our mobility with our, in our academy is, is players losing like core shoulder stability in this fascial line. And, and we you know, how many players have we seen where they're, they're looking to get this club higher and higher and higher and, and, and this reverse spine angle just continues to happen and happen and happen and, what we see right out of the shoot for these players is even if we have them lying on their back and they're lifting their arms above their head in a supine position, like even when they do from here, they're, they're arching their back. So what we're starting to teach these players is, is how to take this cylinder of power, right? This rib, the, the circle under our rib cage and the circle on top of our pelvis. And like, how do we make sure that we don't, Again, unplug and, and lose that core shoulder stability. So I kind of do this in two ways with players. First, I kind of show them like this one's awesome. Pete Holman on the app, he's amazing. 
and he really fires you up when you're doing this one in particular. But I just kind of like them having it with with tension on it, so it's trying to pull them back this way first and pulling the ribs down, getting the core to turn on, and just starting to understand that we need to turn the core on first. If we're moving the lower half, so I don't have the core turning on, I'm going to come out of balance. So I love to start with this one. And then the other one we like to do with, with these players, I'm just going to switch to the light one here so I can talk. I get on the medium, I'll be out of breath pretty quick here. But one other thing we like to do with players is ribs down, core up, thinking about that cylinder here, not letting the ribs flare. And we have them lift the bar up. And when they start to feel the rib separation or the shoulders start to come up, we make them stop. And what that's Brandon, essentially- you, Could you do that one from the side so we can actually see what you mean by a, a flare there? Yeah. So I won't have the tension on it from this angle, but you can see me okay here, Robin? Yep, we are good there. I'm pulling ribs down, belt up, right? So we don't want to be in this anterior position. So if you see those, these two ribs out, so we want to pull those together. And then from here, I'm lifting up. Now, when I have tension on this, obviously it's going to be harder to pull, so I have to. And what we want to get our players to understand is that the moment that we have to start to, to lift with our back to raise this up, that's telling our players where the top of their backswing is, right? If we have if we have to start to unplug that cylinder of power to get this club to come up, then, then we're going to force the reconnection to get the shoulders to start to go. And as we can start to see, that's where that dreaded over the top move comes. So, so now we're starting to see how these things all build for this player, right? They're gonna come here. They're gonna do a few of these, a couple of those guys. Then they're gonna come over here, ribs down, right? Up, and we'll force them to do it up at the beginning. And I understand I'm about to walk off your screen here, but then we'll have them come up and can they keep it down? as they walk away, and then as they walk back, can they maintain the connection coming down? So we'll have them run through a few of those. That, that right? circle, that's a great warm up that's circle right there. Circuit, right? So they're going to do some tilts, do some bowls. If it's uh, an older person, a younger person, maybe a weakened person, shoulder injuries, we're gonna go without, the, without even tension. Then they're gonna come over here after they run that circuit, right? This is so they don't have to think about their posture. They just get into that good posture, right? Really thinking ribs down. What does it feel like to keep the ribs down as we come up, right? Maybe they do a few of these here, understanding how to move their arms without detaching the core and fire another two in the same spot, that's not bad. So um, as you can see, if, if anybody has worked out before, whether it's with weights or not, um, any type of exercise class or um, routine, it's all about maintaining form and function in the body. Um, and as much as we're relating this to golf uh, and the golf swing, we can also test the limits of your students' bodies so you can really understand how you can coach them more effectively. Um, through those three simple moves, you can really understand someone's limits and make sure that what you're asking them to do is actually possible. And to that point, Robin, I, I think that's the biggest, when we see players come in, I'm, I'm always kind of like, what are you trying to do in your golf swing? So I'm trying to understand you know, where they're going and are they asking their body to go to positions that literally it can't go like if, if sure, if I have it here, that's one thing for my external shoulder rotation. But if I get into posture and I turn on and I lose it dynamically, like here, it doesn't really matter. Like, can I do it here? Now we're talking about strength. So if we're trying to players trying to get back here and they, they don't have it here, trying to put them into this position is a pretty futile position. It's going to leave that player pretty frustrated and likely not re-signing up for the next package because they're going to be just 
for four or five lessons trying to get depth and trying to get these arms back to this position we're trying to get them in not even realizing they, they literally can't so let's just ask them to do things they can do they'll have more success and then as that happens we can push them to the app and get them to understand like you can't go to where we need to go yet do x these rotational patterns these foundational fundamental movements on the app get the range then come back and we'll build a new block practice session to get us the width and depth we want and that's really where a lot of our uh prof golf professionals are integrating this system into their programs and their business is like Brandon was saying, we've got the diagnostic tool, which you've seen used so far. Uh, we've talked about block practice, uh, but really creating that sense of accountability, ownership, and follow through on some of those off or, or out of lesson practice sessions. This is really where you guys can use the Golf Forever Swing Training System to really help your students continue to make progress when they're not with you. And how many people on the call today have said, okay, Mr. Mr. Student, you need to do these five things uh, at home. Um, they forget, they need video, they need instructions. The Golf Forever app will do that for you intuitively. So it takes a lot of extra effort away um, from your business plan to really focus on driving more lessons and, and having more fun and progress with your students. 100%, and to that point, the more they do it, the less <clears throat> we're standing on the range, right? The old traditional way, hold the club, like we gotta get them to move this. Well, they can do that at home. They can do that at the cottage. They can do that in the garage. They can they take it with them when they go to Ireland. They can take it with them when they travel down south. Uh, this is really one of the most versatile tools uh, on the market, especially when we look at that door jam. Um, you can take it anywhere with you. Um, so do we want to move on to the backswing width and depth, yeah. Brandon? I think that's the next topic. 100%. I was looking for the door jam. Um, yeah, 100%. So backswing width and depth, 100%. Um, So there's two things I find that causes problems for width and depth, right? One is they don't provide enough pivot in the lower half. They don't have enough shoulder turn to begin with, so they can't get deep enough because they're just, you know, they don't have enough here. They really can't rotate their shoulders very much, so they can only get them, you know, kind of here instead of back in here. So the first one, I like, this is one from Rick Smith on our golf performance side of the app. Amazing, amazing. He kind of goes through, similar to what we're going through, some of the stuff that he's found. And what I'll say is every time I work out, I get another, oh, that's a great drill. I need to kind of incorporate that. So every time I work out, I get another one in my Rolodex of uh, exercises or dynamic movements to do to train our players. So I like to put this right in here. I talk a lot about like, it can't cheat. So it's gotta stay, if I want this to point this way, I better move my belt that way. So this one, I just love to just try, start to get them to understand, like let's get lateral shift and weight transfer to start and to make sure that we don't slide, right? We're including this pivot with this move. So players can start to understand, right, that we can just get my golf club, this feel of, of this happening together. And the resistance is nice because when we have this club in our hands, it's very easy to do to do this and use our arms. So it's, it's critical to have them focus on keeping that butt the same, like, like in the same looking on our, on our belt buckle to force this. And, and what we can see is, if we then take that move and just feel that side push and pivot, we're starting to get some nice width here to start this backswing. And then we can incorporate this feel from there. I'll show you two backswing ones I like. One's more advanced. And then and, um, this one is kind of good for all players. Another one I got from the Rick Smith one. And I was doing it a similar way, but Rick kind of got into the split hands, which I liked. 
So again, core down, ribs on. And what we're trying to do here is rotate. We start to get tension here, and we're trying to get the player to stop pulling the tension with the trail elbow. And we're trying to get them. I even have them say, like, the O in the golf forever is staked to their sternum, so we can't shift it off your sternum. It's like a stake in there. We're just rotating, maintaining some width here. And we'll show you how we can take this position here in a, in a few minutes into our transition. So we can kind of start to train these feels for these players. I know I'm going the wrong way. I'm really kind of doing this way for my backswing. So, but we're doing a few of these guys here just to get a feel for how we're going to pivot better. In that glute, that's what a lot of our students don't, uh, aren't able to feel is by using these resistance bands, where when someone, it really depends on what type of learner someone is. Um, for me, when I'm working with my, my golf coach, I can conceptually understand what they are asking me to do. I can see it, but for me, and everybody is a different style of learner, but when I can feel it, that is truly when I make that long-term sustainable change in my game. And that's what these resistance bands and our system enables you to provide for your students is that feel. And that is what retrains motor patterns. Um, and that glute specifically that Brandon's talking about firing, that feel, when we were working with Kevin Thistle, we had him do this exact exercise and the lights went off. It was his aha moment. So um, we're really seeing that fundamental change with some of these exercises. I think we gave him in 25 minutes, I believe a full 10 yards of carry. Might have been 12 in 10 or 15 minutes. We we did we did make his body move a little bit better. I, I, you know, I can't say it was all golf forever, but it was we gave him more mobility through his lead hips. We could turn better. Then we trained a better feel and pattern for him with the golf forever bar. And then he put it into the golf swing. So it was like, give him some more mobility, train the new mobility. So he kind of understands how to use it and then, and then hit the ball. It was awesome. Um, uh, one other one just for rotation that we could do, and I'm only going to do the back half of it is on here and really just start to, to rotate this bar so we can start to really feel shoulder rotation. So just another one, and you can see how we record, we, we can incorporate all these through. So like, it, and all depends on, on the level of player. Another one I really love is, is into this one here. So if you're a right-handed player, right? You're gonna turn into the right side. You're gonna get into a split squat stance. The importance is that your back, spine angle, back leg is all one straight line. That's the first key. So we're going through here and we're rotating. Okay, and then you can take this up levels. It's like, can I go fast, stabilize, come down slow. Go fast, stabilize, come down slow. I wouldn't do this with Mrs. Haverkamp or Mr. Haverkamp, you know, 80 year old, but my long drive hitter, you can you know damn right I'm, I'm having him do that. So, because we really want to feel this load and turn, right, like into that trail hip. So the, the backswing kind of, just to kind of show you that little circuit again, I have the player come here, right? We would do the backswing move with them a few times this way. I know that was the right-handed one. I would be doing, I just don't want you to, don't want to put my butt in the camera. <laughs> you know, these ones here, really feeling that width, right? If I want to go farther, it has to be not this way. It has to be rotation. You have those ones. Get those feels there. I may even come over this way as a lefty, go into my split. Really feel that, like, turn into that back side. And then I would come in and I really like to kind of another one I kind of introduced just to kind of continue to feel that. Right. And then I'm going to just try to thin one like that every time. But, um, but what we're trying to get these players to feel is this load into this back leg. 
And that's a perfect segue into proper body sequencing in the swing. And that's really why we chose this um, sort of roster of different swing um, elements is that they all build on one another. And that's truly what we love about the app as well is everything builds you up for long-term sustainable change in the swing and repeatable patterns. That's really what we are trying to use this swing training system for is not only for individual performance, but for you to help players build and create a repeatable swing that sets them up for success on the course. So let's dive into that body sequencing topic there, Brandon. One of my favorites, um, if, if I just call it the kind of the T-arm swing. Now we can make this a little harder for players or sometimes it makes it easier because it kind of gives them something to focus on other than keeping these arms wide because we can put like two pens kind of on our chest, hard to do by yourself, but then we can kind of have it hold it onto your chest as we go along. So what we're going to do with this one is this position never changes, right? We're just going to start to kind of build on all these heels, right? I'm wide, we're rotating back. I really, really like my players. When we get up to the top in here, right? I like to really exaggerate these shoulders staying cl closed, right? Not leaning this way, these shoulders staying closed. I tell people it's like, on this exaggerated feel, it's like uh, someone, Geppetto, if I was doing keto, had a string through my belly button. He was like pulling me towards the, to the lead side. So we get this tilt, rotate into this backswing. Geppetto pulls me and I turn through from this angle. Right, we come this way, pull through and turn. And we just kind of get these players always making sure that this stays, right? Really exaggerate, staying back. And we turn through, really gets them to understand how to take the trail shoulder out of the transition, right? I kind of say it, and I'm sure a lot of you guys do the same thing. It's like, if we're taking a, a, a hairpin corner, we don't wanna, put the gas on right until we're on the way out of the corner. So that just keeping them, their shoulders closed for an extended period of time allows them to understand like when we get here, we don't have to, we don't have to turn right away. And if anything, it's even better for power and speed if we can stay closed a little bit through, it's kind of like pitching, right? If I turned immediately, it would go down left. So getting them to understand it's going to stay back. And then the other one is same kind of idea. Like how do we take the trail shoulder out of the downswing? I'm still on the camera here, Robin. Yep. You're good. I kind of have them as externally rotated as they can get into posture, hold it there and just learn how to not use the arm to rotate our body through really understanding like I need to use the whole trail side right because if I just use the lower half this is a problem low point issues big pushes high blocks and if I just use the top side over the top now we're in trouble but we have to have during the downstream like both of our sternum and our belt laterally shifting at kind of at the same rate as I say uh, to be able to get them to cover it a little bit better and then obviously in the driver they're still moving at the same rate but we tilt that access and setup so it stays behind so we can get that upward angle of attack and as you and can see Brandon starts a lot slower with some of these exercises and builds on speed so the slower we start with any of these or the closer we start to the wall anchor, uh, the easier it is for people to learn 
and grasp the movement patterns. And then we can always add a faster tempo, more tension or more resistance um, to make them a little bit more challenging depending on the level of the player. Great point, Robin, great point. Um, thanks for bringing that up. It's stability and balance in the golf swing is critical. So having speed that's not stable is really gonna affect club face. So to Robin's point, you know, I'm not going to do this one with any type of speed until I can get through here and, and post up. And then maybe as I get better, I start to do it with a little bit more speed where I can post better. So, yeah, we always say to the player, own the pattern, build speed into it instead of trying to learn it with speed because all the wrong muscles are going to fire and that's not what we want. Golf swing. That's power. Probably where they, why they got to where they are now is exactly. that's why they have, dancing, why so. they have back pain. That's what I worry about with super speed and these speed training ones, right? Like if we don't own the sequence, we're just training speed with the wrong muscles. Like the number of players we use the K vest that, that maps kinematic sequencing and, and the amount of players that are wrong or can't do it consistently. Right. I just, I just worry about, that and the long-term effects of, 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 you know, injuries with players where our speed training, it's going to build up to that. Like our world long drive guy, we did our body test on them, but he's swinging it at, we had him in, in here two weeks ago is 153. He's kind of averages 148 at like miles per hour at like 90, 80% of his swing speed. He's not ready for speed training yet. So if one of the 15, 20 is fastest swings in the world, isn't ready for speed, like not many people are. So that's why I like this program so much better than those. It, it builds the foundation to be able to create speed. And then you can graduate to the speed training balls to build it properly. So you don't have golfers or low back problems or hip and knee issues. Let's, let's build stability and balance in the golf swing first and then speed on top of that. Awesome. So why don't we move into our last uh, swing topic for the day? Um, we have about 15 minutes left. So we really encourage anybody to ask any questions they might have through the chat or by raising your hand. Um, but right now we're going to dive into improved impact and follow through positions with the body. And this will be the last topic we talk about for the day. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so this one's, I do two of them with this. Uh, I actually, I kind of start with three, and, I, and we kind of done this. We did this before, where maybe I missed this, Robin. You tell me if I did. Where, like, if players are struggling with that, golf forever bar the zero, the O and the zero, I'll be okay. The O is in line with the sternum, and we're just I'm gonna do it this way, right? Learning to turn without turning the body, right? So now. What we have to do is we have to dynamically get the medium. We have to dynamically get them to understand, like, we don't want to turn this and leave this behind. That's why they hit it fat. We have to get them to understand that these things move together. Then we push the arms away, right? So we rotate as a unit, push the arms away. I'm not going to have tension on this for you guys, but if you come this way, and you can see how I'm posting up, I talk a lot about these headlights and getting these to match up better before we release the arms. So I have them start there because if when they go to do this drill, this cord starts hitting their body, you can see like that's a 70% of golfers right there. Right, so we've got to get them, put it on your chest, Get your cylinder on, use this left side to push through. I know we're talking right side for most players, but I'm a lefty Canadian. And then we push our arms straight away. And if we do this properly, this will never hit you. So then we kind of go, okay, let's go to impact. And, and you'll see on the, on the warm up station, one of our pillars is this impact position. And you see how we've kind of built our way up to it. And I kind of take my players one step further. It's like, yes, here's impact, but here's where we need to get to. And I like to kind of now get my players to really focus on like, 
those headlights, especially with this. And when we put this in the hands and the light bulbs that kind of go off, when first we put them to impact position and they go, oh, that's different. And then I say, yeah, but I really want you here through the follow through. And I put them there and they, they go, that's where you want me to be? And I'm like, well, no, that's where you want to be. And that's where you want to be if you hit a good ball. But if you want to keep hitting it fat, I mean, you can, we can stay back here all, all day. But we've got to get them not only here in the impact, but here through follow through. And what we see with players, slice players, is when they get into this follow through position. Can you see the follow through hand okay, Robin? Yes. Yeah, like we see this underneath. As soon as this hand gets underneath at this point, we all know where that ball's going. And it's, and it's not anywhere close to the target. So we start to get our players to understand with this motor pattern first. It's like, we've got to let that hand, you can see how much different right, release. And as I say to players, like we have to learn how to like, we don't open a door with our shoulder. Like imagine you went to a door to open the door for someone and you, and you turned it like that. People would look at you like you were crazy. But a lot of people go to release the club that way. Half of that reason is they don't know how to move their body, but the other half is they can't move the body in the right sequence. And at least not without some motor pattern training. So this really allows our player to focus on first. I first have them not even worry about this hand. It's like, can we get into this position here in our follow through position first? They have to understand like this left side of the body right side for me, like it has to get up and get out of the way and turn out of the way to be able to let our arms extend away from ourselves. So I don't worry too much about the underhand in the first few times. It's really slow. I kind of grab the bar from here and I direct where the bar needs to go so they can just kind of focus on this pushing. And then we build in a little bit of a routine for them. So it's, you know, typically these three, Three of these, really feeling that fold together turn. And from this angle, you can really see how that allows me to learn how to post up. And if a player is doing this too much with the shoulders, we'll see them here. So that's when I come in and I kind of push that, pull their shoulders back. So kind of understand where they need to get to first here. Then we take them into here. And I always make them hold. Right? Hold for two or three seconds. One, two. My big thing is your golf swing should, your finished position should feel like this. And if I'm in a plank position, every muscle on my posterior chain is fired. And if I don't, I'm, I'm down there. So and I get them to really. One of the, uh, the exercises as part of the assessment as we, as we look at. Yeah, so I, I, and Side so we plank, go this so. finish, feel that squeeze kind of like a plank. Then we have them walk right over and get into their posture, right? Because we want those glutes and those core turned on. And we're really having them focus on, on that drive and that finish hold position. I'm like, squeeze. If we're not squeezing and feeling the squeeze here, right, then we're going to come back. And then I say, do it again. And we're like, I get that, that until every time they finish, they're engaged, but it's really hard. So without forcing the feel, really getting some tension on it. So they really have to push through the golf swing. Um, and as you can hear, it's, it gets your heart rate up. So it's not uncommon for players of ours to now come in gym gear, right? And, and, and because of that, it, it kind of just continues to build this whole thing. Like as they start to move their body better, they're like, holy crap, I just gained 10 yards. Like imagine I could turn a little bit more. Imagine I could engage my core a little bit better. And it just leads to them being a little bit more active and being a little bit more healthy because, you know, golfers want to hit the ball better and they'll kind of do whatever it takes to hit the ball better. And you know, half of the golfers, maybe more of the ones I said, like, if you, were, if you worked out, 
you hit the ball better. Like two years ago, I had a yoga instructor as part of our program and he would have these yoga classes for our members. And, you know, 5% of the people would take these classes. So that's why we had to go a separate way. But now we're kind of doing the same thing, but with this product, that's like getting them to get better core and better mobility and better strength, but they're doing it in a golf fashion sense. And the buy-in to our program now has been through the roof. So that's awesome, Brandon. I really appreciate you sharing that insight there. I am going to remove Brandon from the spotlight um, and reshare my screen just to take my you guys. Place. Pardon? Yeah, I'm just kidding. I just love you. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. So I hope everybody can see my screen now. Um, and I truly hope everybody uh, took something away from what Brandon has gone over with us. Um, this is now about incorporating Golf Forever into your program. So whether that is your own individual program, whether, whether that is your lessons, camps, clinics, academies, or your golf course, we do have some really great solutions to help you achieve some of those goals. Um, these are some of the frequently asked questions from some of our end users. So being your students or some of the members we're already working at with clubs. Um, so how much is the Golf Forever Swing Training System? Please note, this is retail price, not wholesale or PUD price. Um, 269 for the actual swing trainer and all of the accessories that you have seen Brandon use today. We then have the app subscription, which is 278 per year Canadian or $34 a month. So very reasonable considering it is a customized program based on your body, based on your golf game and based on what equipment you have at home. Um, what is the free trial all about? So with the purchase of the Golf Forever training system, there is a free 30-day trial for the Golf Forever app. And we really encourage all of our users to follow the 30-day trial diligently. It will really give you some insight, not only to how your body moves, but how you can progress very, very quickly. Um, can I cast this onto a TV? Yes, absolutely. A smart TV, you can... Um, take it from any device and put it onto a TV to see on a larger screen. Um, lastly, uh, can I? how can I access the program? So the Golf Forever app is on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store, or you can sign into your account on your laptop, your computer, or anything like that. So it's a very versatile, accessible program um, that you can take with you anywhere, whether you are in your basement, whether you're in the gym, whether you're at the course, or whether you're traveling. And that's what's so great about this system. So the wholesale program, I know some people have been asking, I don't have a unit. How can I get a unit? I'd like a PUD offer. So for PJ of Canada members, uh, we offer $140 for the swing trainer um, and three months app access, which is a fantastic offer. Um, the pricing for our wholesale program is $168. And again, the retail is $269. So we're making about $100 a unit when we are offering these for sale with physical inventory in our golf courses, in our academies, in our training facilities. We have some great sales programs as well. Um, we have buy six, get one free. Um, and we can multiply that out by as many buy six, get one free as you like. Um, so if you want to get 12, you get two free and vice versa. Um, there is free shipping in Canada uh, for all of PGA of Canada members. So this is also a great additional perk is you are not actually paying extra for shipping. The prices you see here are the prices you pay. Um, and we're seeing such great adoption rates that some of our clubs who bought in early on in May and June are now placing their second order uh, for, for more swing trainers. Now, you have seen right here in Brandon's video, the warm-up station. Um, this is a premium warm-up experience. Um, we have a weatherproof uh, system to live outside or inside. It's on wheels, so it's very easy to transport. It holds a tablet or a one-pager, so we've just talked about how we can actually access the app. If this is something you want to have in your academy or in your facility, um, 
we can actually put an iPad on here for people to enter their username and password and access their individual program, which is so awesome. Um, and then we have an 80 pound bottom plate that provides a secure anchored and safe solution for this mobile station. Um, we love this for the integrated warmups for different situations, golf lessons or fittings, driving ranges, fitness training sessions, you name it. Um, and what we love the most about this is there is a PJ of Canada offer that includes the warm-up station and two swing trainers for $1,500. Um, so a lot of our clubs are going with a inventory purchase and the warm-up station because we see about a 10x increase in conversion in sales when we have the warm-up station somewhere on the property, whether that's hole number one, whether that's the driving range, or whether that's the fitness facility. So there's a lot of great ways that we can actually promote the Golf Forever system um, to provide multiple benefits for your club. And then lastly, the keys to success. Um, the most important thing is training. Um, that's training for yourself to understand the system and use of the app, um, but also attending um, webinars like this. And we're going to have a lot more throughout the course of the year. So we will definitely share those details with you as we have more topics and more dates. Um, the other thing here is, again, like I said, the personal use and integration into your own training, because it's like going to a restaurant. If you haven't tried it and adopted uh, the, the system into your personal practice, it makes it very hard to articulate the value. It's like going to the keg and asking what, if they, if you should order the steak or the salmon and you haven't tried either. So it's really about you taking ownership and adopting this into your personal program. Um, of course, we've just mentioned the on course range or fitness center swing training access. So having this uh, system available for your members, your students to try um, fitting and lesson integration, that's critical. Um, and on course events, we have some great ideas for on course golf forever experiences that we will share with everybody after this call, and also in shop merchandising. So display of the retail box, making sure it's visible, whether that's uh, social media, <coughs> excuse me, um, marketing emails, proper product launches, education sessions, you name it. Brandon and I are here to support you on things like that, whether it's a, a webinar like this for your members or your students. Um, we have a lot of options. Uh, so please reach out to us if you have any questions on that. And then lastly, we Can I just jump on that problem? Sure. Yeah, I was just going to say on that point, like anytime reach out, happy to have a zoom call walk through this in a little bit more in depth if you have a certain player you're struggling with something and you're like hey what would you do in this case with this player with movements to help train it we're always here for you um and can make ourselves available kind of with notice at any time for you so exactly. And that's sort of where we'll leave it off today. Um, we are your directors of sales dedicated to Canadian green grass success. We want you to succeed using the golf forever swing training system. So we have Brandon McLeod here. He's the class I had teaching professional um, and, and uh, helps me manage um, the different elements of the Canadian business, really focusing on green grass and training facilities. He is your guy in terms of getting some of these questions answered. So please reach out to him. Um, his email is Brandon McLeod at golfforever.com. My name's Robin Hansberger, Robin Hansberger at golfforever.com. We are here for you. Uh, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask. And we really appreciate your time today. We hope you found value in the session we provided. And we look forward to seeing you again um, at future sessions. Um, and also, if you guys want to place some orders or have questions on the system, please feel free to follow up afterwards. Thank you again for your time. Thank you, Brandon. Um, and we Thanks. hope you all have a great day. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.